Being good at something does not mean that you're gonna make money. Being qualified at something does not mean you're gonna make money. This is a harsh truth about money. Hey Driven Mofos, in this episode, we're gonna talk about a fatal mistake that people make financially by thinking that their qualifications or by thinking that they have a good product or a good service is going to be the thing that's gonna make them money. Now, for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Michael Mojo, I'm the founder of Mojo Human Performance Institute. We focus on business, mindset, and lifestyle hacking for Driven Mofos. And the reason why I do these is because most people waste their life and I just don't want you to be one of them. So a fatal mistake that I used to make and I made for many, many years in my business was I thought, that the more that I study, the more I research and the better I become as a coach and as a speaker, then eventually my events are gonna pack out and I'm gonna have thousands of people coming to me because I'm gonna be wicked. And I spent all this money. I spent, at the time, it was like hundreds of thousands of dollars learning, growing, developing, traveling the country. And so I became one of the top coaches in the country. Yet at the same time, I found that my events weren't selling out. I was like, what the fuck is going on? What's wrong with me? What am I doing? Like, it must be because I don't know enough. And then I would compare myself to other coaches and go, wow, I know more about them than anything. And I would criticize and judge them. And I go, I can't believe they're teaching this shit. I would obliterate them. Like if I was on stage with them, I'd crush them with the knowledge that I have. And it wasn't until one day after I'd studied a lot on marketing and a lot on sales, I went, ah, now I get it. Okay. I'm a fool. And I'm a fool because I kept thinking that the more qualifications I had, the more knowledge I had, then the more people would come. And that was incorrect. In fact, I wish I could find a picture of this. I might have to have a look through my phone and see if I can chuck it up on the video of this, on the video recording which we normally pop up on YouTube. So we normally record, if you're listening to this on audio, normally we record these in video format and you'll see me sitting in my office and talking on YouTube. So jump across and make sure you hit that subscribe button for the YouTube videos as well. Plus I'll be dropping a heap more trainings and so on in the next couple of weeks. You wanna be on there. So make sure you go to YouTube and look up Michael Mojo double zero and hit that subscribe button. You know, in my office, my office used to be, my whole wall was full of all these certificates and they'd be certificates of all the stuff that I'd studied from my personal training qualification to, you know, the diploma that I was studying for personal training as well that I'd gone through and all the parts of that. So I'd have them all up in certificate holders. Then when I studied through the Czech Institute and studied high performance kinesiology, that was in there as well. The studies I'd done on nutrition, that was in there as well. Then the multiple NLP mastery programs I'd done with different companies, that was on the wall. Then I'd done, you know, some mindset things where, you know, I had them up on the wall. And so my wall was just full of all these certificates because I thought when someone walks in, they're going to see all these certificates and go, shit, this guy knows a lot. And the truth is no one gave a fuck. (laughs) Okay. They just didn't. First of all, because the The first part of people understanding the value that you're worth is through marketing. And so if your marketing is dog shit, and this is the same for people who are employed. Now, I talk about this a lot at my events, our business and entrepreneur odyssey, where there are a lot of people out there who think that marketing is just the marketing that you do, whether it's on social media or whatever, but marketing is everything. It comes down to the clothes that you wear. Like right now, I woke up in the morning, I've done my hair, I'm sitting here because I just wanted to record this nice and early. And so I'm sitting here pretty much, not in my pajamas, just whatever I wear in the morning when I get up. It's nice and cold here in Adelaide, so I just chuck on my jumper. But I'm essentially marketing myself. If a corporate comes and looks at this podcast episode, they might look and go, who the fuck is this guy? Like, he looks amateurish. He's in a tracky top. You know, he's in his rogue exercise gear, I guess you could say. He looks amateurish. Now, that's because my marketing says that, you know, I don't dress up in suits and ties. Now, that's part of my marketing. Now, you know what? They're not my target market. So I don't really care. The majority of my target market are people that are business owners. And most business owners that I know, they normally wear whatever they need to wear in order to do whatever job that they need to do. So sometimes when they come over or whatever, because, you know, doing one-on-one coaching with them. Sometimes I'll rock up and they'll be in their exercise gear. The next time they rock up, they'll be in, you know, nice jacket and things like that. The next time they're in jeans and a t-shirt. And so I tend to match that as well because that's my marketing. I try not to be too serious, but I try not to be too daggy as well. Although sometimes I miss out on that, but we all market. You know, when someone goes to your Instagram page and they have a look, you're telling them how you want to be marketed. So if there's pictures on there about your family and that's part of your marketing, I go, oh, cool. That person's a family person. That's essentially marketing. If I go to someone's Facebook page and everything that they post is Lamborghini, Ferrari, supercar, private jet, blah, blah, blah. I go, okay, well, this is probably either a luxury lifestyle brand or I'm not sure, or maybe I think, and some people might think this, it's, I don't really care. Some people might think, well, look at that wanker, he's a bit of a show off. Whatever it is, that's the marketing that you're portraying. And that's gonna give an audience a bit of an insight into what they're gonna think about you. Now, there's gonna be good and bad about that, you know, no matter what. And it's something that I think we all need to learn how to accept is that people just 
judge you no matter what. And they're going to judge you from their position at any point in time. If they're having a shitty day, they're going to judge you differently than when they're calm and chilled and relaxed. It also comes down to their values. Like if you go to my page, there's not a lot of photos of my family. You might go, well, this guy doesn't give a shit about his family. So I don't want anything to do with him. That's just marketing. And we're all marketing ourselves from the clothes that we wear. I remember years ago watching this TV show and it was about people who couldn't get jobs. And these people wanted to work. There was this guy on there and he was sitting down. He was going, I would really love to get a job. I love people. So I love connecting with people. But he had tattoos all over his face. Now, this was like 10 years ago as well. And I think facial tattoos are becoming a lot more acceptable and understood in society. But this guy looked crazy. He had shaved head, fucking earrings everywhere. His whole face was tattooed. I think he had his eyeballs tattooed. And, you know, he's going, I would love to work with people. Now, that's good. But that marketing already comes across in a certain way. He's marketing himself in a certain way with a certain lifestyle. And for a lot of people, that's going to be scary to them. So if you want to get a job in a childcare center, it's going to be very, very hard to market yourself when you look like that. Now, people can say, oh yeah, but you know, we shouldn't judge a book by the cover, but that's how humans are wired, whether we like it or not. It only takes a short amount of studies into neuroscience to realize that our eyesight is one of the most effective tools that we have to figure out whether we're safe or not. So if you're walking down the street, you can see someone 100 meters away walking towards you and you're assessing, is this friend or foe? Do I need to avoid this person or do I need to maybe do something? Like, what do I need to do? And so straight away when someone's walking towards us, our brain is trying to figure out whether we're safe or not. Now, depending on our past experiences and depends what we've learned and depends how we think about things, depends the friendship circles that we have, the values that we have, our brain's calculating at extreme speeds to try to figure out, am I going to be safe here? Now, if straight away you're walking towards someone and they have a response to you, that then is essentially from their eyesight in most cases. We have trained ourselves through the use of our eyesight to figure out whether someone is a friend or foe. Now, if we're making it harder to become friends with people just from our eyesight, then that's a challenge. It's like dogs. Dogs can smell things from a long way away, but their eyesight's shit. And that's how they navigate the world. We navigate the world in most cases through our eyesight. Now we do hear things and we smell things and so on. You know, I can't smell something 100 meters away in most cases, but I can normally see something 100 meters away. Now we might hear something, but our eyesight sort of has to then try to figure out what that sound means. And so there are relationships relationships between our other senses and our eyes as well. Anyway, coming back to it, this guy wanted to work, he wants to be around people, but at the same time, the way he looks is intimidating to most people. Now that's not everybody, but to most people it is. And so his marketing is saying something about himself. Now, whether he likes it or not, that's his choices. And he's put himself in that situation, that circumstance. And now I know there are some people out there who will say, well, people shouldn't judge the book by its cover, but they do. And they have perceptions and they have opinions. And so you know, that's their marketing. Now, his ability to sell himself might be different. Let's just say he gets an interview and in the interview, you realize he's an amazingly sweet person and he's unbelievable, his life story, blah, blah, blah. But that normally doesn't come without marketing first. So normally marketing precedes sales. And so if our marketing creates issues, then it can be harder to create sales. And this happens whether we're an employee or an employer, we're looking at how do we market and how do we sell. And a person that wants to get paid and they want a job, they have to market themselves and they have to sell to themselves. And in this day and age, if you're going for a job, a lot of people go and they'll check out your social media pages, they will check things out and they will start to make assumptions about you based on your lifestyle. I remember years ago when I was a manager of a personal training of a gym and we were looking for a personal trainer, this person put in a job application and one of their photos was them out partying and it looked like they were on drugs because their fucking eyes were dilated or their pupils were dilated and it looked like they were off tap and straight away when we're looking through it, we laughed. We're like, have a look at this guy. Now that was the marketing that he gave. Now he was even able to have that job interview because of that picture. Now, some people might go, well, that's, you know, we shouldn't do that. Well, people do. So bad luck. That's the way that it operates. I mean, in an idealistic world, we wouldn't judge others. We wouldn't worry about others. Everyone would get along, but that's an idealism. And idealisms are normally very one-sided. They're not well thought out, but most people live in an idealistic world where everyone should be happy and everyone should get along. But the truth is that they don't. And if you want to navigate the world in that idealistic way, your life's probably going to be shit and you're going to be emotionally disturbed and you're going to have a lot of frustrations and anger and resentment towards people and the world itself. And this is when I hear people say things like, you know, the world's fucked. Well, that's only because of the ideal that that person created about how the world should be. The world's just the world and things just happen the way that they happen. And the more you know about how to think through things, the better life becomes and the more you can control your emotions. So anyway, it ended up that this guy ended up getting a job working in a tattoo parlor as the person on the front desk, you know, in customer service. Now he was stoked, but I remember his wife saying, you know, but people shouldn't judge him. 
They do. <laughs> so everyone judges everyone else because that's the way that we survive. And humans survive by looking at things and trying to figure out, is it a threat? And if they're wired to think that people with tattoos look aggressive or that things that are different, that are unusual, and they don't really know it's better to avoid them than put themselves in a certain circumstance, then they'll do that. And that can happen in any way, shape or form. I mean, I'm a tradie. So originally I did my diesel mechanic apprenticeship. This was when I was quite young, when I finished school, because I had no idea what I wanted to do. And if I went and walked into a trade-based business and I was wearing a suit and tie, they'd go, fucking look at this guy. Now, if I walked in there and said, well, we're going to do leadership and team training and I'm in a suit and tie, they're going to go, what a fucking knob. I'm not going to listen to this guy and they're going to switch off straight away and I'm going to have to work twice as hard to build their trust again because of the way I've presented myself. And so this happens quite a lot in our society where people say I shouldn't judge, but that's how people do it. Now, if I walked into a corporate business and I had work boots on and I'm there to go give a talk on leadership and training and I'm in work boots and overalls and I've got mud all over me and dirt all over me because it looks like I've come off of a trade site, they're going to look at me and go, fucking hell, check out this guy. I remember this because I had a client years ago called Nick and Nick was a young real estate agent. And anyway, Nick said to me, I'm going to go buy a new car, Michael. And I was his personal trainer. And I said, oh, cool. What are you going to go buy? And he said, oh, mate, you'll see tomorrow when I rock up. Anyway, he rocks up and he's in this white stock Holden Commodore. And I was like, oh, I thought Nick would go out and buy a BMW because he's this real estate agent and real estate agents have these nice cars, they're showy and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I said, Nick, I thought you'd get a BMW. And he's like, why is that? And I said, well, because you're a real estate agent, mate. That's I thought that's what they have. And he said, Michael, I sell low socioeconomic housing. If I go and I rock up in a BMW, they're going to look at me and go, fucking check out this guy. I don't trust him. And he said, but if I rock up in my white Holden Commodore to sell a luxury house that's worth millions of dollars, they're going to look at me and go, this real estate agent, shit, look at this guy. And he said, it's all about the perception that you create. And he said, from the second that you rock up, people are going to judge you. And I just remember that sticking that if he rocks up in a white Holden Commodore in low socioeconomic areas, people in that area go, wow, that's like the ultimate goal of success is to have that sort of car. Whereas if you rock up in a white Holden Commodore or something like that in a high socioeconomic area, they might think that you're a bit of, you know, don't have a lot of money, lower socioeconomic, and so they might not trust you. And so this is something that a lot of people really need to think through is the way that they market themselves and what they're putting out to the world because people do look at it. The other thing is how we sell ourselves. And the way that we sell ourselves is normally through the way that we communicate. Part of something that I learned years ago was that in my events when I didn't swear, we would get people who rock up and they would get highly offended when I would just be myself during the events and swear. And that's why in this podcast, I asked my team to stop beeping out the swearing because I want people who understand me. Now, that might not be good marketing for some people, but for other people, it is. I've spoken to people over the phone before and they go, I don't swear and I don't like people who do. And I go, okay, well, you probably won't like my events. And they go, oh, but I've heard good things about them. I'm like, yeah, but you won't like my events, believe me. Because the way that I market myself is through my natural language. But some other people love it. Like when we beeped out the swearing, I had multiple people in our community send me messages and go, Mojo, can you not beep out the swearing? We enjoy it when you're enthusiastic and you can feel that vibe of you just in your flow doing your thing. And that's what we like. Don't beep it out. I think that it's important to be yourself, but you also need to understand how you're marketing yourself and that if you need to adapt your marketing or your sales strategies to suit a certain demographic, then you might need to do that. But it also might come at a cost and at an expense. And that expense might be your own self-worth. It might be your own self-belief. And you might feel like you're not able to give part of yourself to a group of people. So it is important to be yourself, but you just have to understand understand how your marketing affects others and how the way that you sell yourself affects others. So this then brings us back to the conversation around being good at things. A lot of people out there think that because they're good at something that they're automatically going to get jobs or, you know, I've had people before in the psychology field or in the mental health space who go, you know, who's this guy is not qualified to talk about this stuff and they have a dig at me because they think that I'm making money that they should have or that they're entitled to have because they have an entitlement mentality around what they've learned. Now, no one's really entitled to anything and going to university or getting a trade is just a certain way of thinking. You know, there are plenty of people out there who I would let work on my car because they're absolutely amazing at their knowledge around cars, but they don't have a trade. If you're going to get your car fixed by someone, then you want them to have a trade and you want someone who does your electrical work to have a trade because there are certain legalities around that. But in the majority of cases, there are lots of people in any industry that don't enjoy their job. Now, if you're going to a doctor and a doctor doesn't enjoy their job and they're there just to make money, they're not gonna really be that great at what they do. And there are other doctors out there who are fucking phenomenal at what they do because they love what they do and they keep pushing hard and they learn and they keep growing. So I think that it's important to keep supporting those who are great at what they do because it keeps making people step up and do better. And it also forces people out of industries who are shit at what they do and are just there for the money because they don't know what they're doing in life. And I talk about this quite a lot at our events as well. 
well. But please understand that you're not entitled to anything. If you're a good plumber or you're a good electrician or you're a good artist or you're a good musician, you're not entitled to anything because unless you can market yourself well and unless you can sell yourself well, then you're probably not going to make a lot of money. And there are lots of musicians out there who go, yeah, but I'm a better singer than Beyonce. Well, the world doesn't think so because the world thinks that Beyonce is better because Beyonce is great at marketing. And then there are people out there who go, you know, well, I'm a better artist than whoever it is, this person. Well, the world doesn't think so because the world buys their art because they're amazing at marketing and selling themselves. You know, just being good at a skill set is one part of the equation, but the other part of the equation is the sales and marketing process as well, which I think most people need to learn. You need to learn how to sell yourself better. There are lots of people who are amazing personal assistants, but no one knows it because they're stuck in a job working for someone who doesn't appreciate them because they don't know how to sell and market themselves any better. And so if they go for a job, they're just going to go for another PA job at the same price point that they're already in. They might get a better boss, they might not, but they're going to have to learn everything again. And that's just because they can't sell and market themselves. So if you're someone out there who has an amazing skill set or has an amazing product or service, then I would highly recommend that you spend a fair bit of time and study how to market and sell better so that then you can get your product and service into the hands of people that then will pay you well for it. And I really believe that people should be highly paid if they have a great skill set, but... If you can't market and sell that, then no one's ever going to know. And you know, we all know that there are probably millions of people out there around the world who are amazing singers that no one will ever know about. There are other people who are amazing at guitar and drums and other things and dancing and art and all those things that no one will ever know about because they just don't focus on the marketing and the sales. And this is why I think that everyone is a salesperson. I think that everyone is a marketer because we're always marketing and selling something. And sometimes it's ourselves, sometimes it's our opinion, sometimes it's our ideas. Just need to think about things differently. Now, if you're one of those business owners out there who goes, shit, this is like me, where I'm an amazing electrician or I'm an amazing plumber, I'm an amazing physiotherapist or I'm an amazing chiropractor or whatever it is, but I'm not getting paid well and I'm getting obliterated by people in my industry who aren't as good as what I am, then I would highly recommend that you maybe change your thinking a little bit and put more energy and effort into marketing and sales and learning those skill sets than just consistently doing the same thing over and over and over again and thinking that your skill set's gonna be the thing that sets you apart from everybody else because it probably won't in most cases. Now, sometimes if you do do the right joint ventures with people and you've got someone who's amazingly skilled at marketing and branding and you work with them, then you might get that huge exposure and then eventually boom. And some people do that as well. There are plenty of people in the health space that create or that do amazingly well, but it's because they normally work with someone who also has the sales and marketing background who then give them exposure. And this is why sometimes professional athletes have managers because that's the skill set that helps them to earn more. This is also the reason why you know celebrities have publicists and things like that because they're the ones who look after that sales and marketing aspect and maybe they so you just really need to think through this a little bit. I hope that this helps driven mofos because most people waste their life and I just don't want you to be one of them. But also most people waste their skill sets, they waste their talents, they waste the things that they're good at. Now, if this stuff is resonating with you as well, shoot me a message as well because you probably, if you think that you've got a business and you're not making the amount of money that you want to make in your business and you believe that you've got a great product or a great service, but you're not getting the traction that you want, then it's probably time for us to have that conversation about maybe even joining us for our business and entrepreneur odyssey that we run, which is essentially a year-long event for business owners where every 90 days we catch up for three days with other business owners as well and I bring in speakers and a whole bunch of other professionals as well to close up those gaps in your business so that you can keep growing it. It's fucking awesome. I bring some really wicked people. So anyway, shoot me a message if you're interested to know more about that. Also, if you haven't already jumped across and hit that YouTube channel and hit that subscribe button, please make sure you do so. I hope these videos are helping or these podcasts and I really appreciate those of you out there who have been sharing this with your friends and family. I'm just gonna keep doing them and yeah, we'll see how it goes. So anyway, remember, never underestimate the dream.